lads, lasses and the rest of the masses, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mono from Mono CFC, and this is a match preview for Chelsea versus Borussia Dortmund. This is the series on the channel where I preview every match of this season, laying out my expectations, lineups and more. Welcome back to the lead in. Our final game in pre-season sees Chelsea travelling to Chicago, Illinois to take on our only overseas opponents, Borussia Dortmund, at the Soldier Field in our last game before our match week 1 Premier League clash with Liverpool. As always, I'm going to be going through the lineups that I believe will play, including personnel and their tactics. So without further ado, let's look at our opponents for this match. Dortmund did very well in the Bundesliga last season, only missing out on the title due to goal difference, sharing 71 points with title rivals Bayern Munich. Last season marked the first time in our history that we faced Borussia Dortmund, both games coming in the round of 16 in the Champions League, where they initially beat us 1-0 in the first leg, before getting knocked out by Chelsea after a 2-0 victory for the Blues in the second. They did so well in the league last year mainly because of some quite frankly phenomenal transfer business to add on to an already decently strong team. Additions such as Karim Adeyemi, centre-backs Nico Schlotterbeck and Niklas Sula, as well as defensive midfielder Salih Urzian added to an impressive core that included Emre Can, Daniel Marlin, Marco Royce and Mats Hummels. They have had an outstanding preseason so far, winning all five of their games, though admittedly, apart from their latest 3-2 victory against Manchester United, the teams they have faced have been far below their level. They scored 18 goals in four matches against low-tier German sides Westfalia Rheinen, Rotweiss Oberhausen and Rotweiss Erfurt, as well as American outfit San Diego Loyal. They will look to try and continue that great goal-scoring form into this match against Chelsea. So how will they plan on trying to achieve that? Let's look at the team. Dortmund, managed by the German Croat Edin Terzic, have stuck with the same formation in all but one of their games so far, a variation of the 4-3-3, so that's how I have them lined up for this one. As this is their toughest test between now and their first competitive fixture in the DFB Pokal, I believe they will field a lineup very close to full strength. First up in goal for this Dortmund team, this is going to be their number two, Alexander Meyer. Their number one, Gregor Korbel, has reportedly picked up a muscle strain in the previous match against United, so is in doubt for this one. The obvious like-for-like -like replacement is Maya, who came off the bench in the last game. For the back four, it's going to be quite strong, with a few rotations from their last game. Starting at right back is going to be Marius Wolf, who is replacing the more obvious choice of right back, Thomas Murnier, who is out with a muscle injury, bizarrely coming off the pitch only a few minutes after he had just come off of the bench. For the centre-back partnership, this is going to be again slightly rejigged, with Nico Schlotterbeck being a doubt for this game after he missed the United game with a knock. Instead, Niklas Sula will come in off the right-hand side to replace him, with Mats Hummels playing from Schlotterbeck's usual left side. For the left-back, I think this will be a return to the side for new signing Rami Ben Sabaini, who played second fiddle to the Norwegian Ryerson in the last match. Moving into the midfield, this is a bit of a tricky one because Dortmund have a lot of quality options, but the most obvious inclusion is going to be the club captain, Emre Chan in the more defensive midfield role. Unfortunately for Dortmund, they have lost their franchise player Jude Bellingham to Real Madrid, but they have apt replacements, including the next man I'm going to be putting in here for his Borussia Dortmund debut, new signing Felix Metzger. This young man is extremely talented and can play almost anywhere across the midfield, so I'll be putting him on the left hand side where he can cut onto a stronger right foot, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him roam in this role. And finally on the right hand side, I'm going to be putting in the industrious Austrian, Marcel Sabitzer. There is definitely the option to play either one of Marco Royce or Julian Brandt in these two roles, but as Mecha hasn't played yet in pre-season, I'd imagine he'd get an opportunity to play sooner rather than later. Finally, the three up top. I'm going to be sticking with the score of the two goals last time out, Daniel Marlin on the right hand side, the ever pacey and dangerous Karim Ediemi on the left hand side, and down the middle I'm going to be sticking with Sebastian Haller, though I could also see the young Yusuf Omokoko play here instead. In terms of how Dortmund play, they are, despite being a big team, largely a success from counter-attacks, and against a more possession-based side like Chelsea, I suspect their game plan in this one will be to try and hit us on the break. I'll go into a few main tactical points about Dortmund's setup because a few things are quite interesting. Unfortunately, there isn't much footage of their preseason games available, so I haven't been able to go as in-depth with them as I'd like to, but from what I have been able to watch, I've determined a few tactical nuances. 
Firstly, as is the case with a lot of modern teams, and especially German ones, Dortmund are a team that likes to press high, win the ball early, and try and spring rapid counter-attacks using the very pacey wingers at their disposal. They are comfortable trying to play out from the back, and it seems as if their focus is on getting the ball out to those wingers, and playing interchanging passes for the fullbacks and centre mids in triangles. Once the opportunity to play a ball in behind arises, they often take it, trying to get their front players into these types of areas for cutbacks. One thing that's interesting about this setup is they use Adiemi, a left footer, on the left, and Marlon, a right footer, on the right. Usually teams will opt to do the inverse in order to give the option to cut inside, but with a great target man Seb Haller in the centre, keeping the ball on the winger's stronger foot for the cross or passes to feet seems to be the ideal scenario instead. That being said, the two wingers often swap around and Haller likes to drift slightly wider in order to let Adiemi play a bit more centrally, as was often the case in the game against United. I should say, despite them winning that game against United, I believe they were extremely lucky to come away from that game with a victory. The majority of their goals came from individual errors rather than good team play, and they did look mightily suspect in defensive situations, which the Manchester team's forwards couldn't convert. Speaking of Dortmund's defence, I did also want to point out that they do something slightly interesting when defending. Sometimes they will opt not to press and instead sit back and invite pressure, and they do this by switching to a temporary 4-4-2, with Haller and Adeyemi being left up top to hit if they win the ball back. Daniel Marlin will fall almost into a right mid position, and they will stay compact centrally but leave themselves more open on the wings. I think if Chelsea are to get success in this game, that is something we will have to work around. Now from the black and yellows to the blues, let's talk about our Chelsea Lions. But before we do, I'd like to ask you to please subscribe to the channel. We are less than 1,000 subscribers away from 15k, so if everyone watching this right now clicks that subscribe button and joins the masses, we can easily hit that goal. Starting with the formation, 4-2-3-1 once again. A lot of things have changed with this team during preseason, but the setup is not one of them, staying the same for practically every match, and once again Pochettino will most likely be using this setup in this one. As has been the case for most of these previews, I will be putting us into one starting 11, but expect major changes at half time. So first up in goal, I'm going to be putting in for a second consecutive start, Gaga Salonina. As is the case with a lot of my predictions, Gaga started the last game after I changed my mind and said that he wouldn't, and despite having some shaky moments, I believe that this was due to nerves and shouldn't be looked into too much. I have discussed this in a previous video, but I really hope he gets to play in this game in particular, because it's in his birth state in front of his friends and family, and I reckon he'd get a great reception. Not only that, but I want to see him tested against a good attacking side, as he didn't have a save to make against Fulham, and couldn't really show off his shot stopping. Also, I just don't want to see Kepper in net, but I know now that I've said this, Kepper will probably start. For the back four, this will be a very strong one once again. We will need the defensive acumen of Reese James on that right hand side in order to shackle Karim Adeyemi in my opinion, and as he was rested for the most part against Fulham, I expect him to come into the starting 11. For the centre backs, I'm going to go with Thiago Silva once more, but this time Levi Colwell will hopefully be starting alongside him as he didn't last time out. Shalabar has a knock and will be assessed before the game, but if deemed fit enough to start, I do see the option of him replacing Silva in this partnership. For the left back, I'm going for a rogue prediction here and putting in Lewis Hall. I think he was mightily impressive last time out and I reckon Poch will be swayed to include him in the starting lineup, especially with our other options being relatively below par as of late. For the midfield, I think that we're getting that same midfield pivot of Enzo Fernandez and Andre Santos, though I wouldn't be surprised to see Carney Chukwameka get another start as he was electric in that game against Fulham. I was super impressed with Andre too, and reckon he retains his place as he looks ever likely to stay in the first team next season as Pochettino has suggested. One thing to note is that brand new signing Leslie Ugachukwu is with the team currently, and Poch has said that they will assess him. Whether that means he will get some minutes in this game is yet to be known, but it would be nice to see him play for a bit in the second half if he can. Ahead of these two, I'm going to be putting in Christopher and Kunku. Apart from Jackson, Nkunku has been our best player in this preseason tour, scoring three goals already and looking dangerous in every game he's played. I think he was very good coming off of the left hand side in the last game, but I expect there to be changes in that front line. Nkunku is a must start for any and every game in my opinion, so I'm moving him into this position in order to accommodate others, while still having him in a position that is suited to his playstyle and he can cause issues from. 
for the wide midfielders. I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but surely Nani Madaweke has to play some part in this game, no? He seems to have recovered from his small hamstring issue and didn't feature at all last time out. It would be extremely odd if one of our likely starters for next season got zero competitive minutes in pre-season. That being said, I'm going to put Angelo Gabriel into this right-hand spot, as I expect Nani to come off of the bench in the second half. For the left-hand side, this one is incredibly obvious to me, it has to be Mikhailo Modric. He missed the last game and I reckon he was being rested for this one, as it's more of a challenge than Fulham was. I can also see Ian Matson playing here, but as Misha has looked great when he's played and good in some training clips that were released recently, I'd personally like to see him play. Finally, up top in the striker role is, everybody say it with me once again, Nico Jackson. Excellent. Nico Jackson has to start in this one. I would eat my hat if Mason Burstow gets into the team ahead of him somehow after his rather mediocre performance in the first half, and with Jackson's pace and runs in behind, I think he will cause a lot of issues for the slower Dortmund backline, as I will get into a little later. Now, as for how we will play, I think we are going to have a rather straightforward game plan, but before I talk about that, it's time for the comments of the day. I got a lot of good responses last time out, as usual, so here are a couple of the comments from the last question of the day. Thank you guys so much for the continued support, it really means the world. But now, for today's question of the day, what would be your starting 11 for this final game? Alright, so how will we play? Once more, I have spoken at length on the specific of Poch's 4-2-3-1 in my deep dive video, which as ever will be linked in the top right hand corner and in the description for those of you on mobile. But I think we can afford to be a little more expansive in this game, as Dortmund have shown in their only real test of pre-season that they are shaky and pretty disorganised defensively. Against United, they looked like they were going to concede from pretty much every attack, and they left themselves open for the counter continuously. I think doing that against Chelsea would end badly for them, which is why I suggest that we set traps for them in order to win the ball back and hit them hard and fast on the transition. We know that runs in behind have been a very good tool for us in almost all of our friendlies, and I expect that to be the case in this one too. Mats Hummels is not the fastest centre-back in the world at his more senior age, and I think Jackson will have the time of his life running off of the shoulder against him. There'll likely be an onus on the fullbacks to get high to pin the two wingers into their own half and stop them from doing the same thing to us, as well as provide offensive pressure too. Hall and James on the overlap are both excellent crosses off the ball, and I expect that to be an option we go to if we don't find any success playing the one-touch football that we have shown we can now play under Poch. If we are able to do that though, I'd expect the majority of it to be between Mudrick and Kunku and Jackson on the left-hand side, rather than on the right-hand side, but Angelo will also cause issues cutting inside onto his left and playing the ball centrally, as he has done so well in the previous games. I do think this will be a fast-paced, competitive game with lots of back-and-forth attacks, and will be a joy to watch. As always, I'll be live-tweeting my reactions to the game during each and every match over on Twitter. Nope, still not going to call it X. So if you don't follow me over there yet, make sure you do so you don't miss that. For a score prediction, I'm going to say 3-1 Chelsea. Dortmund do not look organised at all from what I've watched, and with our new clinical forwards, I don't think we'd let them off the hook like United did. Similarly, I don't think we'd make the same glaring individual errors that United did, and are playing a much stronger starting eleven than they did, so I don't expect us to concede a lot, if at all. I'm going to say that our goals will come from Mudrik, Nkunku once again, and finally a goal for Enzo Fernandez as my rogue shout. For Dortmund, I think Marlon will once again pop up with a goal, as he seems the most likely to latch on to any mistake. But that was just my lead-in match preview for Chelsea vs Dortmund, thank you ever so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on these possible lineups in the comment section below, and if you'd be so kind, subscribe to the channel and leave the video a like if you enjoyed. Don't forget to tap the notification bell so you never miss a video from me, or check out some of the other videos on the channel on screen right now. I've been Mono from Mono CFC, and remember, in the rain or in the dry, keep that blue flag flying high. Come on you blues!